Howdy y'all. It's been a while since I've done one of these proper videos. I was on the road for a while, but uh, one of the requests that I got actually a couple of times while I was gone and a few times before then was to do a comparison of various different types of whistles. And at first I thought, well, I'm not really sure if I'm well suited for that because I don't have a whole bunch, but then I kind of went through my collection and I realized I have a handful of them in the key of C, which is of course not the standard key that you'd want to go with, but uh, I had a few that I can run through and kind of show some of the differences of them. So I thought I might be able to come up with something that might uh, at least give you guys some, some kind of starting point. So right off the bat, uh, this is a Generation C. Generation is probably the most common type of whistles. Uh, they're mass produced, and if you go through enough of them, you can probably find one that'll work pretty well. This one isn't bad. Um, and what I'm going to do just for the purposes of this video is to kind of run through one tune on each of them so you can kind of hear how that'll go. The tune I'm going to play is one called The Walls of List Carol. The only reason I picked that is because I can play it in E minor fingering, if that makes any sense, which translates to D minor, which is the actual key that the tune is typically played in. So I'll, I'll do just kind of a quick run through on the A part on each of these and kind of break down what it is that is kind of characteristic about these each of these types of whistles. So I'll start with the generation, because again, that is the most common one. This is a brass generation, um, so you can hear how this one sounds. So, again, that's kind of your standard tin whistle sound. Um, you can find some generations that sound really good. Um, this one is fine. It's got a bit of a crack in it, so it's obviously not perfect. And I've had it forever. Um, but it's perfectly okay. And it's got that traditional sound. And it's not very expensive. They're about 10, 12 bucks. So, that's kind of your basic brass whistle. It's got a real bright sound. Um, and if you get a good one, they can be real well. Patty Maloney, the Chieftains, played one of these for a thousand years, and, and it sounds fantastic on all their recordings. So that's kind of your basic entry-level whistle. Um, the next, I guess you could say, step up from that, uh, this is a plastic whistle. This is from Cesato. I used to play these a ton when I was touring with a group that was out on the road six, eight months of the year, and we'd play in a variety of different climates. The advantage to something like this is that it's unfazed by the weather. Um, I've played it in the, the hottest part of Texas in the summertime, and I played it in freezing cold Minneapolis in the wintertime, it always sounds the same. The tuning, the intonation, it's always great. The trouble with it, which you'll hear in a second, is that it sounds to me, to my ear anyway, kind of like a recorder. So I never particularly liked the sound of it, but they were reliable. So I'll play this one, the same tune on this one. So it's, it's got a different tone. Uh, again, it's very reliable. Uh, it's louder, which may be an advantage in certain situations, um, but I never particularly enjoyed the tone. These aren't a whole lot more expensive than the Generation. I think you can get these for about 20 bucks. I haven't looked at them in a while because I don't really play them much anymore. Um, but there's definitely an advantage to an instrument like this, because if you, especially if you do a lot of traveling. Um, I just never really cared much for the tone. When I was asked to do a recording project, I needed a whistle in the key of C. So I went online and uh, I quickly, the only thing I could find was something on Amazon or eBay, and I found this one. This is an aluminum whistle. I don't remember who made this. There's no mark on it, so I can't even look it up to find out. Paid about 70 bucks for it, and I don't particularly care for it. And I'll, I'll run through here, you can hear how it sounds. sure if you can hear it too clearly over the recording, but it's very breathy. Uh, it's reminiscent of the Clark, the original Clark whistles, which had the wood uh, mouthpiece there. And there's just a lot of air sound to it. Uh, it's not particularly consistent, and I'm not sure how they're able to charge so much for it. Um, I mean, it is well built, but this doesn't sound very good, and I have no idea what to do with it now. It's been sitting in my case for uh, five years now, and I haven't played it since about the day I got it, because I just couldn't stand how it sounds. So this is an aluminum one. I'm going to come back to that because that's not to indicate that all aluminum whistles are that way. So I'll get to that in a second. The last one then is one uh, that I play regularly from a fellow by Gary Humphrey. He's the one who makes all of my whistles. This is a C whistle, also brass, but it's handmade as opposed to the generation, which is factory made. You can hear, hopefully you can hear the difference.
extremely clear, um, yet doesn't sound plastic and doesn't sound like a recorder like the Cesato does. It's got a good tone, good volume. To me, he makes the best whistles I've ever played, so that's why I have a whole set of his. They're fantastic. Um, so the materials, uh, to, to my ear, are less important than the mouthpiece and the way the thing's built. Um, but so hopefully that'll give you at least a decent idea of some of the different types that you can get. Now, I did bring a couple of other ones here in different keys. These are both an A. This one is a plastic whistle, uh, again to illustrate the point that not all plastic whistles sound like a recorder. Uh, this one was made by a fellow named uh, Glenn Schultz, who unfortunately passed away about 10 years ago, I think, at this point. He made some phenomenal instruments. Uh, he called these the water weasels, kind of a cool name. Uh, it's made out of PVC, uh, whereas the other one was, I believe, injection molded or some, some sort of uh, molding. This is just PVC that you can get from Home Depot. In fact, I play this one so much you can't see it anymore, but you used to be able to see the writing that you could get uh, from just a regular type of regular PVC tubing. And he did some amazing things with it. Um, so this one is, uh, like I said, it's in the key of A. I'll just play a different tune here. And this is a fantastic whistle. I've had it for about probably 15 years or so, uh, and it worked great, but I wanted to go with another Gary Humphrey instrument when I went on my last tour, which is what I did. So I got this one. I think I made a video for this one a while back. This is aluminum as well, just like that sea whistle that I played that I can't stand. This one, on the other hand, is fantastic. It's intonation is fantastic. It's just got a great tone on it. And I really love playing it. Like I said, I like playing all of his instruments, um, which is why I bought a whole set from him. So hopefully that gives you some idea uh, of the different types of instruments, the different types of materials that you can get out of them. If you're looking for something to get started with, you really can't go wrong with a Generation or Fadog or, or one of those types of, of instruments if you can have the chance to try out a few of them. Uh, if, you, if you go to a music shop that's got a whole bunch of them, hopefully you can try out a few and you might run through five or six of them before you find one that's, that's reliable across the whole scale. So if you get the opportunity to do that, I would. If you're just buying it off of Amazon or eBay, you obviously you don't have that opportunity. And that's just kind of the risk you run with a mass-produced instrument. If you can get one that's, that's handmade, um, I would definitely recommend Gary. They're not crazy expensive. If you want something that you're going to stick with, if you, if you feel like playing the whistle for a while, you know, look him up. I'll post his information in the comment or in the, um, yeah, the, 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 uh, the description here, so you, hopefully you can check him out. He does great stuff. They're handmade, and they're reliable. If not, Cesados are a decent choice, particularly if you are planning on playing in a variety of climates, because they are stable in any, any environment. Uh, if you like the tone, then I would say go with that. It, the tone never did much for me, so it's, it kind of, it's, it's a matter of personal preference. So check out a few of them. I guess that's the gist of this video, is try as many as you can until you find one that suits your ear, because uh, what works for you may not be the same thing that works for me. So uh, try out a few of them and see, see, what, see what you like. Hopefully that's of some value to you guys. I'll get back to doing some regular uh, tune breakdowns and things like that hopefully soon. And if you have any questions about this, by all means let me know. And if you have any requests for future videos, uh, do that as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks very much, y'all. Bye-bye.